Hello all, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Kiran Chituri. I work at LucidWorks. I've been with Lucid for five plus years. Some of the things I worked on during my period at Lucid is um, I worked on Spark Solar integration, Zeppelin Solar, Fusion SQL, Fusion Signals, and recently ML integration. So uh, before we start the talk, I wanna ask some, like, I, wanna, I wanna know my audience more, like how many of you are like data scientists here? How many of you are engineers? Uh, and the, I, ask, I wanna ask that question because uh, I, I'm an engineer myself, I'm not a data scientist, I don't know the internals of ML. I, I'm usually like not in like the training the models, optimizing the models, I'm more worried about serving the models, how the model works in production, if the model is robust enough, if the model is uh, uh, up to speed, like it can like do faster predictions and not take a lot of time because we are, we are worried a lot about that in search, like faster times. So there are a lot of ML frameworks out there. And like there is, it seems to be, it baffles me that like we're talking about AI and everything, but like there seems to be no good inter-exchangeable format right now between different libraries. So for example, like let's say you train a model, you have data scientists on your team, they train, your mo they train their model in like, let's say scikit-learn. And, um, and how, how, how would you use it in production? For us, Fusion is an enterprise platform where we offer our product to customers, where they can like do like uh, training on their data or like do predictions on their data. They might have a data scientist team uh, who are like, oh, we don't wanna use your tools, we wanna use our own tools, which we are very comfortable with. But then when it comes to production, how do they deploy this to production? How will this get used to production? And like there seems to be like PMML was the standard, but it's like not still widely adopted and their, their PFA is coming up as an emerging, it, it's, it's becoming a standard, like, but it's not there soon. Like there are libraries for like PFA that are not, that don't fully support Spark models yet. So like we seem to be still in the early days on like, uh, let's say you wanna train a model, you have a data scientist who, who can train a model in whichever library they want. There seems to be no standard where they can like export the model to a standard format and use that form and use that uh, model, use that, ex uh, use that exported format in like somewhere else, like in a different programming language. A bit of a background at Lucidworks, uh, we are a Java Scala platform, we don't do Python. So like uh, anyone who wants to use a Python libraries, they were at a bit, bit, uh, bit of a disadvantage because it, as a platform, it's hard for us to ship Python or Python libraries because they're like native C bindings and things like that. So we've been like, uh, I think like four months ago, five months ago, we were discussing, okay, how do we, how do we do our ML framework so that like we can support other libraries out there without really shipping uh, all the dependencies, like without shipping like some five to 10 machine learning libraries with our platform product because it'll blow up our size, it'll be hard for our support to maintain, it'll be hard for us to maintain as engineers. So when we initially built uh, Fusion, we built it with a Spark. Like Spark is used a lot in Fusion for predictions, for training, for batch processing, for SQL. We, we try to use Spark as much as possible. And as, as part of that, uh, we, incorporated, we incorporated Spark into our framework really deep. Like you can do like end-to-end -end training using Spark in Fusion. Like you can do like logistic regression model training and then you can use it at query time or index time within Fusion. But there was a problem. It's slow. It's not as fast as we want it to be. So for example, for real-time queries, Spark ML takes 100 to 200 milliseconds. And it was being very slow for us. Like no one can use it in like, for example, let's say predicting a category for a search query. You can't use it in search queries when the latency is too high because Spark is optimized for batch processing. It's not optimized for single document predictions or it's not optimized for single document scoring. So here comes MLeap where this is a library that was really optimized for uh, ML uh, to be used at runtime without any dependencies and which can do faster predictions than Spark. Look here we can see like, I think this is my mic drop slide like where like Spark ML usually takes 100 to 200 milliseconds for predictions on single documents. Whereas M MLeap takes like uh, six microseconds, 1000 of a millisecond like to do predictions. So now we can like confidently like integrate this into our search framework where someone could, someone can do, someone can incorporate the trained model in their pipeline to do predictions, to be able to use in search. And like I'm gonna talk about I'm gonna, I formed this talk so that like I'll talk about the ML framework we had and how, how, how did we integrate MLeap and uh, what's the advantage we are getting with it and hopefully like this helps 
uh, with your own, own use cases in implementing ML and uh, how it works with libraries. So just a bit of uh, uh, just a bit of uh, a data flow here. So how how does one do training right now in Fusion? Let's say you you you, you index data. You have data in Solar. You have your train data labels and uh, you and then like let's say how how do I create a, how do I train a model? So as I said, Spark is pretty well deeply integrated into Fusion. You have your job. You go to Fusion UI. You run your job, which which runs a Spark job, and then Spark reads the data from Solar. It trains the it trains the model based on the configuration defined, and then the trained model actually goes back to the Fusion Blob Store, which is nothing but an object storage service that uses Solar for uh, storing the model. So at the end of the training, the uh, the trained model goes back into the Blob Store in Fusion, which is nothing but an API around Solar. And then at serving time, what happens is whenever like people are using it at like query time or index time. Um, the ML stage, it, it can be a query stage or an index stage. It, it goes to the blob store when, it, when the model is first initialized. It goes to the blob store and then it reads, the, it downloads the model and then it starts serving queries uh, from the ML stage. So at this point, we, are not, we don't want to hit any, uh, we don't want to hit any lag. So that like the first initialization when the pipeline is created in Fusion takes a bit of like maybe like some uh, one second that's during the initialization and from then onwards, the queries are served by, by using the model prediction and model scoring. <coughs> so before Fusion 4.1 and before, we use Spark ML all throughout for predictions. That means like we couldn't work with any other frameworks out there. And like it, Spark ML is good for like bad jobs. So like let's say you wanna use it for at indexing time, it works great. But it's like really high latency to be used at uh, real time. And like it takes like 100 to 200 milliseconds, as I said, for predictions, which is really not ideal for anything. So coming in 4.2, in a coming uh, Fusion version, uh, we are going to use MLEAP for our predictions. And MLEAP has like full parity with Spark algorithm, so there is no problem there. And it also supports external libraries. So to actually talk about uh, after Fusion, like uh, now talking about MLeap, uh, why are we even talking about MLeap? Because it's faster. And what's MLeap? MLeap is this lightweight uh, library that, that provides a unified service uh, at, uh, to do scoring at prediction time. And it, and it says, like, it, it's a very new library. Like, I think it's been around only for the like last two to three years. And um, they work pretty much on parity with Spark. They support some components of uh, scikit-learn and TensorFlow. And then they, come up, they came up with their own framework on how to work with different libraries and how to work with scored models. So the goal here is your data scientist or like your data engineer can use their own framework, like let's say whatever the tool they are using uh, for doing training. And at the training, what they would do is uh, they would use they would export the model as an MLEAP format, MLEAP, into MLEAP serialization format, which is like bundled. So irrespective of uh, they are using Spark ML or they are using Scikit or TensorFlow, once the model is exported into an MLEAP uh, known format, which is an MLEAP bundle, then it can be used at runtime run without any dependencies. Now let's say uh, you want to run it, you want to use it at runtime, but you don't want to use Python, like you don't want to use the C bindings or you don't want to use any of those. And M MLEAP is like, it provides such a nice interface so that like you can actually run it without worrying about, okay, wh what all dependencies am I bringing while I'm uh, trying to use it at runtime. So here is like a simplified diagram of what MLEAP offers. Like it, it offers, it, like it sits on top of these libraries, uh, Spark, Scikit-Learn, and TensorFlow, and you don't need to change the way you're training the model. You can keep it the same, but like after, at the end of training, uh, you, don't, you, you, uh, you can like not, not decide not to export it as a Spark, uh, Spark format, in Parquet format, but you can change it to use like an MLEAP bundle. And MLEAP works seamlessly. Like it's a few, it's not a lot of code change, but it's like few lines of code change where you can say, okay, now export it as an MLEAP bundle. And once you export it as an MLEAP bundle, you can use the MLEAP uh, runtime library to start serving uh, predictions. So here is a quick example on uh, how, how we do it, right? So let's say we have a pipeline here, pipeline estimator, which is like a Spark pipeline. So you do your, you, uh, you, you fit your model, and once you fit your model, you can either save it as a 
in Parquet format using Spark ML, or or uh, or you can like use use MLEAP for the serialization there. Here the only difference is uh, if you use it as a Spark ML, the word, like the model is saved as Parquet, and you would need to create a data frame at serving time, which has like a quite 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 a bit of overhead. Whereas if you save it as an MLE bundle, then you can do faster predictions. And it takes the same amount of time. You're not exactly losing anything there. And um, the most important thing is you're still, you still haven't changed like how you're training. You're using all the components of your own library, like in this case, Spark ML to do your training. But at the end, you're just uh, exporting it as an MLEAP serialization, known MLEAP serialization format. So uh, that was an example with Spark, how MLEAP integrates with Spark. This is our answer for like our integration with TensorFlow. Like uh, without, because we can't actually bring the TensorFlow bindings, we, we have to work with TensorFlow Java bindings. And in our runtime code, we are trying to integrate more with MLEAP so that like irrespective of the model, like whether it's a TensorFlow model or it's a Spark model, we have a unified interface for using. Here, it's very simple. You have your TensorFlow graph, and then you have your input schema and then output schema. And then at the end, what you would do is you would just create it as a TensorFlow transformer. So TensorFlow transformer actually doesn't do a lot of things. It's a wrapper around TensorFlow APIs. So it, it knows how to read the API. And then using a transformer, you can actually export it as a C bundle. You can, uh, you can export it as a serialized bundle, which can be used uh, at prediction times. Here at runtime, uh, we have the bundle. Uh, you just load the bundle uh, from MLEAP, and then uh, you, you create a schema. Uh, let, let's say, what, what is the type of your input? And you create rows, which are basically similar to Spark rows, but not really Spark rows. Like, they went ahead and they created their own uh, uh, data formats and data types, which look similar to Spark, but not really, like, it, it's different to Spark. They just use, like, same names, like, leap frame similar to data frames and then rows similar to spark rows but it's uh, it's a nicer api and easier to create and at the end what you do is you just transform um, your data which actually gives your predictions right now this is a uh, this is a way to do batch processing like batch predictions or like uh, batch serving, but uh, our problem was we have search queries that are coming in which are not really a batch. It's like it's just a single query, right? Now, can we optimize this more? Can MLEAP optimize this more? Now, here instead of uh, creating a leap frame, what we are doing is we are using a row transformer that was in MLEAP. So this row transformer, what it does is it works with single documents and it gives 2x performance compared to uh, uh, using a leap frame here. So using the, the, the numbers I was showing before, it was actually, it, I benchmarked it using uh, the row transformer. So this is ideal for us. It gives us, it returns back in five to six microseconds and it's pretty fast for, and this gives us the confidence to be able to incorporate this into our search pipeline or we can tell the customer, okay, this, is, this API is fast enough that you can use it uh, at serving time. Yeah, and then I'm going to show a quick demo of like how Fusion ML Flow looks like, and. Uh, I have a quick question. The code snippet you showed is that something that you have running in Fusion behind the scenes, or is it something you're supposed to code in? Oh, th this one? Uh, yeah. Oh no, um, this is all behind the scenes. Like using Fusion via UI, you wouldn't have to worry about any, any any anything about this. We do it behind the scenes. Like when you do training. Uh, we export it as a Emily bundle, uh, which goes into the blob store, and usually, like, customer is not really worried about it. And at query time, when you create a stage, you would just make a reference to the blob. So it will work the same. Uh, it customer doesn't have to do any of this. I'm just showing showing snippets to see how easily we integrate this to our framework, so that like maybe like it makes sense for others to like think about okay, how do we work with all these ML frameworks out there? And how easy is it to do, or how hard it is to do? Yeah, and just to confirm that backward compatibility, if you build something using yeah. Stripe, yes, yes. Uh, so the the story there is that will be since you already trained the model, which is in the Blob Store already, uh, it'll be a Spark model. We will we still have the Spark loadings there. We didn't remove any of it because of backwards compatibility. The newer models that will be created from 4.2. 
they will be uh, exported in the emily format which makes it much faster so let's say you have your trained model but if you have your training data what you could do is like coming from 42 you could like create a new model right uh, create a new job you can create a new model and that will create an emily serialized format which makes it like then you can like you can see the considerable performance difference there between your old model and new model So here I have Lucidworks Fusion. Oh, it doesn't look that good. It's too blurry. Yeah, so here, here I have like already trained. I did an end-to-end, -end, I ran an end-to-end -end job that does the training and everything. So this is my training data here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show what's present in this training data. Let me just get in here, yes. So here I have input text, and then I have a category News group. This is too much. I think I can change this. News group S. And then body. Oh. Yeah, that's weird. Anyway, um, so I have the training data here. I have the body, which has the text. This is just an ML20 news example, standard ML20 news example. I have the title, and I have the trained name here. It's not showing up here somehow for some reason. Uh, but there's a category here, which is like the which acts as a label for the training data. Yeah, this is a news group underscore s. For example. For this text, this is the this is the label that was created. Here, if you see, there are actually two text fields. One is body, and one is text. And then once I have the training data in the index, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this job that ran. Uh, so I ran a logistic regression here, which is just a Spark job here. And then uh, I specified the input collection, and then the field to vectorize. The, the field with text, I actually specified two fields here. Uh, I'm, I'm using multiple uh, fields to combine the text. And actually, if you see, there's a column three, which is like, which gives the priority, like um, give this field this much priority compared to the subject. And this is a label field to use. And pretty much everything else is the default. Like we have other configs here that, that, like, that can be used for like tuning the model like how to tune the word, what, what to vec there, how to do the cross-validation, and things like that. And uh, I want to show you guys this. So this is actually using Spark ML. Uh, you, you don't have a lot of flexibility with uh, tokenizers or like analyzers, whereas like coming from the search world, we have Lucene and Solar, which have, like, which have these awesome analyzers that can do a lot of stuff without you having to write custom code. So uh, we open sourced uh, Lucene, uh, Lucene Text Analyzer, which has been like in Spark Solar repo for two months, two years, I think. So this analyzer can actually like using this, you can define your own your own like default solar analyzers, and then like you can use this for tokenizing your data, and without having to work, without having to do a lot of custom code on like tokenizing, you can pretty much use all the Lucene capabilities in Spark by just using the uh, by just using like uh, standard solar analyzers. So uh, once I run the job, uh, at the end of the job, it creates a model uh, which, which goes into our blob store. Blob store is nothing but like it's just a wrapper for storage, uh, storing these huge blobs inside Solar. It, so, it stores the blobs as multi-part documents, but at an API level, uh, when, you, when you see this, it's, it's just a blob that will look like a file to you, and then it tells like, because we support different formats, it will tell you like, uh, so here, this model, because I'm using Fusion 4.1, it's showing the type of model is Spark ML. Coming in 4.2, this will be um, this will be MLEAP. This will be an MLEAP model type. And then here, saying like, what's the predictor label field name and all that stuff. And when I use this with my query, so let's say we have the train model here. The model is trained, and now let's say you want to combine it with. Uh, uh, Let's say, let's say you, you want to add it to your search pipeline, right? Then all, all, you have to, all you would have to do is add a machine learning stage and then point it to the blob that was already defined here. 
So here we, it's ML20 news. And then you just uh, say, okay, what, 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 how do I use the prediction field name? Like, just define a field for category. So when you're using it as, when you use a search request, let's say you want to use it as a query, you have a query intent model, then you could club it with an another stage where this becomes a filter field to solar. Like you could say, like, okay, give me the, uh, if you have a model that predicts the category of a query, like, okay, should I search in uh, iPad accessories department or should I search in iPad uh, phone, I iPad department or iPhone department? Like, you, if you have a model, then like you can use a field name and club it with other stages where uh, you are actually like uh, making use of your model to improve your search relevance using ML. Otherwise, you can also use it as part of your index pipelines. So the index pipelines also have a machine learning. It's, it looks the same, it's almost the same. So here what happens is, if you index your data through this pipeline that has a stage defined, then it will, before it indexes the document to solar, it creates a field that goes back to solar, like it predicts the field. Like let's say if, you ju if you're just sending an input text saying, oh this is a document about wind shields, then like it will give you a field name, okay this is a category for motorcycles or something and then it goes back to solar, then you could use it at query time for a different purpose. Like, let's say like this is an example here, this is like, I'm just like, here I just use like curl uh, for submitting documents at index time and it gave me the category. Okay, this, is, this belongs to this news group category and things like that. This is, a, yeah, see here, I haven't sent the category, I just sent the input text here to the pipeline API and then it gave me the category for the model. So it's pretty flexible and, and coming to the story with let's say we have customers that say, oh, I, we have a scikit model that we want to use, we have a TensorFlow model. So what we're going to provide is, we're going to provide people a wrapper that helps them export these models as mLeap, then we can use those mLeap models as part of like upload them to our blob store, then we could use it as part of our stages and that makes our story much better um, because we don't have to use any of their dependencies. Like we are agnostic to their dependencies and we are not too worried about, then we could run everything within our JVM without having to like install Python on the boxes or anything. MLIP is all good and nice. Uh, some of the limitations I would say uh, with MLIP right now are the library is still not super mature. It works, it has full parity with Spark. Like uh, it has a one-to-one -one correspondence with all the Spark algorithms. So to go, to go back a bit, actually how it works is, uh, let's say you do your training in Spark, then how does MLeap know uh, how to use this Spark model? Like how, how does MLeap know? So what those guys have done is, which is a tedious task, they took all the Spark models and they created similar models in MLeap with uh, serving code that's, all, that's like same as Spark, that serves the same serving code, but they're not using Spark library for it. They wrote their own custom code for it using this Breeze uh, library for linear algebra, and that's what makes this much faster. So for, for scikit-learn and TensorFlow, they don't have the full parity yet. Those libraries are still uh, not so mature, I would say. Uh, MLeap, in general, doesn't have a dot one release yet. It doesn't have one dot release yet. I think it's dot eight right now. It's it's Apache licensed, uh, but I but this is this is what's in the industry right now. We don't see like um, this is what we would see like I would see Fusion using until like maybe an emergent format comes, whereas which is supported by all the libraries natively. This is something we could use for addressing our needs for ML in in the future, at least for like next at least one two releases. PFA is really promising um, because the ML consortium at IBM, they came up with uh, PFA format. It, it looks really promising, but it's just out there right now. It's not, it's not like all the libraries have to support it. It will take a good amount of time, I think. Like, but when it comes, maybe, maybe we could replace MLeap with the PFA that's more natively supported. But until then, we, we are using MLeap because it addresses our speed problem of uh, being faster at runtime and not worrying about uh, dependencies and also working with other libraries. Jake Mannix is giving, I think he gave a talk before where he was talking about TensorFlow integrated. I think, uh, so basically we have the same story there. We are using MLeap 
as a wrapper around TensorFlow so that at runtime, we have a single library that we work with. We are not worried about dealing with all the other ML libraries. And coming about roadmap, uh, in Fusion 4.2, we, 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 we have a new NLP component, Spark NLP, which can be used for entity extraction. It's basically Spark NLP library, uh, which has its own, which comes with pre-trained models for entity extraction. I think they did uh, the training using TensorFlow models. Those models are a gig, gig each. I think we are shipping with them, or like when you run Fusion, Fusion will download the models, and then you can use it for entity extraction within Fusion. And uh, pre-trained uh, TensorFlow models, I think we're gonna have very early support for TensorFlow in 4.2. But after that, coming after that, I think we will uh, start to address like shipping our own pre-trained models, either sentiment model or like review model. I think we are we are thinking about like integrating more with TensorFlow now that we address the engineering problem of how do we support these multiple libraries. I think uh, we are gonna do more TensorFlow work there. We have a data scientist team that does like that works like and that does all the training and like creates these models. Whereas we, part of engineering team, my my. My worry is about how do we productionize this? How, how stable is it and addressing these concerns? And we're gonna come up with support for pre-training embeddings and learning to rank at some capacity is coming in Fusion ML. I think it's some capacity, I mean, I think it's in future, future, future version, I think. Uh, Andy, Andy gave a talk on this and we are gonna come up with better integration with TensorFlow. We don't wanna ship Python yet. Our data scientists want us to ship Python so that they can use it for like doing crazy things like Spacey, scikit-learn and TensorFlow, but like from an engineering standpoint, we don't want to do that yet. Um, till till like we because it it becomes hard for our sub because we are not a SaaS company, we are a platform company, and it's not easy to like ship Python and all the, all the libraries along with their bindings and everything. We can't do that yet. So our story for now is MLeap is our story right now in working with uh, other custom libraries. Maybe in future, maybe when we ship Python, then we will have better support. Until then, we're gonna provide wrappers that helps us address like most of our customer needs. And as needs emerge, uh, we are gonna work with, um, gonna have better tools to work with libraries. And, that's, and we are hiring, uh, if you guys go to LucidWorks Career Jobs uh, portal, we are hiring for our team and other teams too, solutions engineers or engineers. Um, thank you for attending. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. And that's all.